to act. Your mind, it is like a gun. And you want to load it up with little itty bitty bullets of knowledge. What's going on family? It's your guy Boro the Lucky Libra. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. As you can see by the title, we about to get into the Boro Scope energies for the week so we can understand what astrological energies we got in our forecast. Okay, so this is going to be for the week of January 10th through the 16th. So let's get right into it. Sunday, January 10th, we got the Sun in Capricorn, Moon in Sagittarius. With the Moon in Sagittarius, we're being influenced to react and respond with a more free spirited energy to the, war, to the world. Dealing with our educational system, with our spiritual path, our spiritual journey, our experiences. We want to be more wise with our approach to communicating, expressing, and relating to others. We want to have more of a philosophical outlook on, you know, the start of this year of 2021 so far. You know, our recent experiences, things that you just experienced the day before, two days before, before this moon transit. You want to be able to look at these things from a more enlightened, all right, perspective. So things that's been holding down the emotions, things that may make you feel like you being you things that you may be experiencing that's playing out as a form of limitation boundaries right now with this uh moon trends that we're going to be able to start developing concepts to detach from these things to set ourselves free from these things but the sun is in capricorn okay so we're direct we're directing all this energy dealing with being free spirited all right dealing with our creative expression as well with the moon in sagittarius our knowledge and wisdom and our educational system and we're seeing how we can use that to build career to build our social status to build our reality to be more practical about how we take an action in the world so this is this transit is helping us to align our knowledge and wisdom with how we build it and structuring okay we know Capricorn is a very tri a dry temperament aka it's dealing with making sense of things it ain't diving into a whole bunch of emotion and creativity if it can't use it build it have a business out business from it gain some structure in his life so we're gonna have the ideas for that Capricorn Sun to get fueled from that creativity from the moon and Sagittarius okay now the moon is gonna be squaring uh, Neptune okay the moon's gonna be squaring Neptune we got the uh, Neptune in Pisces so we're gonna have to learn how to you know look at our life from a more from a more once again not just a broad perspective because Neptune is dealing with like that uh, that expansive Jupiterian 12th house like energy okay being able to bring spiritual expansion from how you're able to look at your experiences from a subconscious level so this is what we're going to be having to learn how to do you know learn to see the more subconscious energy to our situations so not just the result of what may happen not just the physical circumstances of what's going on in our life but more of the subconscious energy more of why we felt like these things developed on a from a spiritual perspective from a frequency vibration perspective okay Neptune is your creative source. Neptune is your connection to energies outside of the physical reality, okay? More subconscious energies, dealing with your dreams, your imaginations, the dream world. So these are things that we're gonna, you know, is gonna be on the mind. When it comes to our dreams and our imagination, we're gonna be really looking at these things, seeing how we've been able to use them. Have we been implementing them? Are they getting any attention? Are we using them in a practical way? All right, this is what the moon in, uh, not so much in a practical way, but uh, are we making sure that we're utilizing our gifts, our talents, our imagination, our creative abilities with the moon squaring Neptune? We know squares are learning processes, so this is what they're going to have to learn from each other, okay? We have to learn to place some emotional intent into our dreams, into our imagination. We could feel a little internally cl uh, uh, clustered, okay? You might have a little internal frustration with the moon square and Neptune when it comes to your aspirations and whatnot during this transit. So, you know, you want to let that energy pass. Don't let it overwhelm you. If not, if anything, you have to learn to gain a bigger awareness of how you're dealing with your imagination on Sunday. All right, with this type of energy. Then we also going to have the sun trying Vesta. So we have Vesta in, um, we have Vesta in, what Vesta at? What Vesta at? We got Vesta in Virgo. So this is actually, because uh, Vesta deals with how we organize. All right, so wherever you're Vesta at, this may be an area of life you're organizing a lot of energy that you're always utilizing to put things into structure, okay? 
So you got Vesta and Fire. You like to organize and structure things that's dealing with your creative attributes, how you express yourself. Vesta and Water, you, you, you like to put things in place with your emotions, structure and organize how you deal with your emotions. When you're about to organize things or work on things, you place a lot of emotional intent into them. Vesta in Air, you like to organize and structure things with your relationships. You know, you're very uh, constructive when it comes to the way that you communicate and build and relate with others. So when we talk about Vesta in Earth, Vesta's already dealing with organizing, but Virgo's dealing with day-to-day -day routine, scheduling, scheduling, you know, uh, how we go about servicing, you know, to the world. What role of service do we have to the world? So when we got Vesta here, these are the things that we're being influenced to organize, being influenced to structure, okay, to work on the ways that we our day-to-day -day routine to work on our schedule okay so we dealing with a bunch of heavy earth energies period a, a bunch of energies dealing with structuring and organizing our reality and this is going to be the continuous theme of 2021 when i was saying in 2020 with all these heavy planets in capricorn the society is being transformed things from your society is going to be taken from you things from your society is going to play, have a bunch of new limitations and boundaries on it's going to be all different type of uh you know new ways that the government decides to do things in this uh new world order so they say but when we look at new world order ain't nothing but a new shift they just try to throw these labels and names on them so we don't view them as spiritual shifts so y'all gotta understand that when they said the world's gonna end in 2012 that was a shift that was a spiritual shift okay so that's something to keep in mind whenever these uh bum ass fucking uh what's the name conspiracy start coming out and just like just anything that's about to happen in the world look at the fucking great conjunction everybody's going crazy about the great conjunction when but that's all astrology People thought they're gonna get superpowers or, or or just all these tweets and things surfacing about the Great Conjunction, but not breaking it down from an astrological standpoint. This is the world we live in right now, where they will put labels on a, a energy that represents such a, a shift in the world that we live in, but they don't want you to get to the root essence of what's really going on. Okay, so um, and y'all want to make sure y'all go check out my, my my video on the Great Conjunction if you haven't. So uh, with the moon, um, with the sun trining Vesta, we're going to have opportunities. We're going to see new ways how we can start working on things um, on Sunday. We're about to see new ways. I'm recording this on Saturday, but, you know, obviously you guys are watching it now. But we're about to be seeing a whole bunch of new ways how to work on things. A bunch of new perspectives within career. You about to see a whole bunch of ways for a lot of us that's been working on things but haven't been working on it in the most efficient way as far as far as the most smartest way we've been working hard not smart this is this transit will help us to see how we wasn't working in the most efficient uh, manner this transit is about to help us to see what resources we have we wasn't utilizing okay what needs to be placed into our schedule and how we need to work on our routine so whether you're doing it or not you're gonna see these things the Sun represents awareness and it's creating opportunities to see how we're able to to see and take action and be goal oriented in this alignment with Vesta and Virgo okay so the Sun is just watching Vesta where the Sun is at in Capricorn is able to see what Vesta is doing in Virgo like oh shit Vesta's over there refining day-to-day -day routine okay constructing new ways how it can service the world through through the resources it, the resources it's gained and accumulated through what they're working on okay I see Vesta you know refining and uh, uh, reinforcing all forms of scheduling and organization over there okay I see Vesta learning from others on how to bring organization and structure into your life through how they're working on things this is what the sun is seeing so all these things are being applied to our social status all these things are going to be applied to how we view how we can broadcast ourselves to the world all right so this is the energy we're going to be dealing with with the sun trying vesta on january 10th now moving on to monday okay monday january 11th we're gonna have mercury conjunct jupiter in aquarius so we know mercury just got into aquarius i'm about to go through the energies from mercury and aquarius transiting through the houses but with mercury uh in Aquarius we're being influenced to think more so out, out the box to think more abstract right now okay to to kind of detach mentally from the things that we may have you know been over over indulging into or been uh, it's been sucking up our intention and being able to see can we look at these things from different multiple perspectives right now okay can we take some of our goals our uh, you know our aspirations and find ways to network them and associate them can we find a group of people a group of uh, a group of energies to organize and build what it is i'm working on 
but these are the thoughts that we're gonna be having. We're gonna be thinking about our relationships and how we could associate things. We're gonna be thinking about what relationships we need to be placing boundaries on, okay? This is gonna be a time that's gonna influence some solitude. You may wanna be alone to your own thoughts. Mercury and Aquarius could be alone to their, their, their own thoughts all day, every day, all right? So, um, but when Mercury conjuncts Jupiter, this is going to be a time to be, you know, more compassionate with how you're communicating, associating with others, valuing how other people uh, are dealing with things, wanting to wanting to learn about certain things, um, dealing with relationships, or when you're connecting to others, you know, you're going to want to uh, have an exchange of information on what you're working on, okay, truly being able to put yourself in a space to be enlightened and gain some wisdom among networking, associations, how things work. This is what the mind is gonna be on a lot, transiting Jupiter in um, in Aquarius, but it's also gonna be looking at things from a more philosophical standpoint, all right? We're gonna try to see the meaning and reasoning and what wisdom can we connect to others in order to build things. This is also a transit that's gonna, you're gonna be in this Mercury conjunct Jupiter, you know, you're gonna wanna communicate some wisdom or something that can enlighten others, all right? And you may just be uh, in a position to receive that. So you wanna be an active listener as much as you wanna communicate and express what you know right now, with, um, well, on the 11th, when Mercury uh, starts to conjunct Jupiter, all right? And it also will be sextile and Mercury, will be sextile and Chiron and Aries. So with Chiron and Aries, we're all learning how to persevere through stumbles and falls, okay? Through, uh, you know, through our ups and downs, dealing with our passions, dealing with our personal outlook, our personal desires, our personal intentions in the world. We know, once again, Aries is a very self-insertive sign ruled by Mars, okay? So he wants to dive into his passions head first. It doesn't got time, doesn't got patience to be doing all the planning. It's just, it's Nike, just do it. You feel me? I know, I know whoever uh <laughs> I should I was an athlete for a long time. You feel me? I should know whoever the fuck the owner of Nike is. I don't know these niggas' names, but for the most part, I bet that nigga got some Aries placements in there with that just do it phrase. Or whoever was branded helping brand Nike and came up with that shit. Just do the shit. Aries. All day, every day. And uh so yeah, with this uh sextile, we're gonna be able to develop ideas mercury thinking communicating details we're going to be able to develop ideas on how we could heal these wounds chiron is going through with our passions we're going to be thinking about how we could start uh you know we're going to be thinking about how we can start capitalizing over certain stumbles we had when it comes to people places and things that we've been passionate about aries deal with feelings so things that you've been passionate about things that have fueled you down in your gut all right whenever we doing like like with like the uh down there by the root chakra energy you know that's that's mars that's where mars be like hovering okay around the root chakra area so for the most part that's where your desires that's where your hunger that's where your motherfucking survival your instincts to survive goddamn come from with that mars energy now you don't want to stay in that lower le lower level animalistic energy but you want to be able to be balanced and know how to have a flow of your lower and higher energies okay period is a balance to everything so if you call yourself a light worker you better understand the dark you better understand occult and esoteric like knowledge and wisdom too because a dark worker will come around and be able to take advantage of that somebody that's dealing with more dark energies could take advantage that you get just caught up in the light and now you're gonna have to learn to know the differences so we have to understand the things that we may call ourselves or the things that just sound good okay understand the light and the dark now um moon entering capricorn okay we got a new moon in capricorn this week it isn't gonna peak until uh you know more so when we transiting into Tuesday, but the moon is going to be fresh into Capricorn. So when we talk about the moon in Capricorn, is debilitated here. The moon do not like to be in Capricorn. This is opposite from home. The moon is home in Cancer. So when the moon is in Cancer, it's like, whew, I get to get settled amongst the emotions and these vibes. I get to deal with privacy and solitude. I get to cultivate the home. I get to connect to people, places, and things I truly care about, okay? This the moon loves to be here, but now it's opposite. It got to deal with what's opposite of the home, the midheaven area, okay? The external realm, how it's broadcasted to the world, its social status, career, how it's working on career, okay? How it's trying to rise to a certain status in the world. 
So the moon don't don't want to deal with this shit. The moon don't want to. It's 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 an earth sign. There's no emotion involved. It's all practicality. It's all about the bag, responsibility, building, legacy, structure. So the moon is like the moon dealing with affect, affection, nurture, emotion, connection, caring. So when it gets into Capricorn, we're gonna be influenced to care about these things. We're gonna be influenced to care about the energies that we've been influenced to pay attention to coming into 2021 with the sun and Capricorn, all right? New moon, new moons are always gonna be conjunctions. The moon and the sun will be together. So if you have the emphasis of the father and the son, the light and the, the uh, you know, you can say the dark, the internal, the, uh, the action and the emotion and the reaction, the awareness, if you got these in the same place, in the same place, this is universe emphasizing us to make sure that we're paying attention and placing our emotional intent and reacting and responding to this energy, Capricorn energy, our new reality. All right. And how are we acting and responding to the people, places and things in our life to build this Capricorn ruled by Saturn. Saturn deals with restrictions. Have you been placing restrictions on certain things um, in this first week? In these first, uh, you know, first couple of days and whatnot into this 2021 energy, have you been placing limitations on certain things to grow career, to grow structure, and, re and the reality of the things in your life that you know you should be taking practical action on? Have you been making sure you did that? But as far as the things that don't add substance to a career, what you're working on, your reality, your new reality that you're building, okay? Have you detached and put restrictions on these things? So Saturn and Capricorn and Aquarius are teaching us, you know, where to put restrictions and limitations on things. They can subconsciously do it to themselves at times, but in their head, they're doing these things to be more organized and structured about the, how they move in this world. So with this new moon energy, once again, it's not going to be until the 13th on Wednesday, but the moon will get into, when the moon is in Capricorn period. This is that you got to understand that we can feel uncomfortable whenever the moon is transiting Capricorn Scorpio. OK, the moon can be uncomfortable in these. Uh, we we can feel uncomfortable just because <laughs> we could feel like okay, just wait one of them days. The shit could be sextiling you the shit. You could be a Scorpio moon. You could be a. A motherfucking uh, 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 Pisces moon, the moon sextile in you. You could be an Earth moon, Taurus moon, Virgo moon, the moon trining you with the moon trining in Capricorn. You still might feel uncomfortable because the moon is uncomfortable there. The moon is being forced to react and respond and connect to responsibilities to possibly putting restrictions and limitations on things. So when the moon is transiting Capricorn, the more you can do that, the more you're putting yourself in alignment. But this is what this new moon energy is dealing with. Us being able to react and respond to being the authority, stepping into that boss role in our personal lives to build reality. So just like how your boss comes into the job and you know they seeing who was late, they seeing what 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 the productivity of the of its employees are doing. It's checking up on all these things. Are you gonna be the boss of your personal life with this new moon energy? Are you about to be the boss and the authority and call the shots and inflict discipline where it needs to be, time management where it needs to be, money management where it needs to be, this in this new reality and following the rest of cap season? Well, this is what this new moon is emphasizing. So when we're not doing these things and then we're progressing with the rest of cap season and then we get into Aquarius season and we out of alignment, but we ain't, re we ain't react and respond to this new moon setting new intentions for our new reality based off place and restriction, limitation, boundaries, seeing where we're going to build, seeing who we're going to connect to on a practical level and what seeds we're placing for career, then it's easy to be a lot out of alignment the next week, the next moon transit. Like, and, and we have to be very mindful of these things. All right, so it's early 2021. Yeah, man, these are, these transits are helping spotting us to get our ish together. So this is what we want to do now. Um, so yeah, the moon enters Capricorn and the moon is going to end up conjuncting Venus. We got Venus early in Cap right now. So v Venus just got up in there and uh, Venus is inf Venus and Capricorn is influencing us to put more value in what we're working on, to make us fall in love with the process of working on what we're working on. A lot of the time we have these goals and aspirations and once we start working on things, we, we, we don't 
we don't understand that we got to fall in love with the process we don't understand that we got to build a relationship with what we're working on and how we're working on it the person that starts to fall in love and connect and put more emotional intent into the work ethic process before the rewards come all right before the millions come before the recognition come that person already fell in love with that work with the grind this is what Venus and Capricorn is showing us. Venus and Capricorn is also influencing us to be more realistic about our uh, about our dating life, our relationships right now. So this is some serious energy when it comes to our relationships. You might have been in a situation like right now with Venus and Cap. Yeah, y'all be thinking Venus is like a, a Venus deal with love, appreciation, support. Venus is not no motherfucking walk in the park. Venus is not a walk in the park. Venus and Sagittarius, what I said. People are gonna wanna feel free spirited with they love. Venus deal with our feelings. So when it's in a certain energy, it's connecting to that and finding ways to feel good dealing with that energy. Venus is gonna find a way to find the pleasure with that constellation. So right now with Venus and Capricorn, the pleasure is the bag. The pleasure is the reward in career. The pleasure is realigning uh, your physical reality and how you broadcast it to the world and the things you're trying to build. So right now, if you've been in like a situation ship, this is the or if you've been dealing with somebody in a situation or whatnot, don't be surprised if this transit you hear the, uh, what are we doing? Uh, what, what's your time frame? Uh, when we getting engaged? Um, we've been dating for this long, boom, boom, boom. We've been having sex this raw, boom, boom, boom. What's the reality of our love, of our relationship, of how we connecting? <laughs> so, I'm telling y'all family, this is about to be the energy with Venus and Capricorn. People trying to get realistic about their motherfucking love. If you got Venus and Capricorn, you don't be playing with your relationships. You like to get to the point with your relationships, especially if you in your, especially if you in your later stages in life and you hitting that 27, 28, 29, 30. You got Venus and Capricorn in that age, thinking about starting uh, the reality of you know family and structure and all that. That shit kick in quick with Venus and Capricorn, okay? Because they already place high self-esteem. They have they truly value everything dealing with they brought their social status, with their physical security. And Venus dealing with our love and our value. So that gotta get aligned in a really practical way. They do their best to work on their um, you know, their values in order to create that environment for them to connect and establish and let these things that they value grow in a practical way. Very serious about these things can be very aggressive initiating these things because it's cardinal. So with this energy. The moon is going to be conjunct here. So this is going to, uh, whew, this new moon, I, I don't be looking at these energies for the week, y'all, until I'm doing the boroscope energies, okay? So for the most part, I usually look at the energies for the week on my own, but until I started dropping the boroscope energies every Sunday, it's even helping me to keep more of an awareness on what we're experiencing during the week. But y'all know, I mean, I'm an astrologer, so a lot of the time, energies be in the back of my head, even if I don't look at them for three, four days, I could kind of understand where, like, like I, by Thursday, I'll naturally know where the moon is at if I ain't look at it all week. Just by it's just how it is. But this is this is for a lot of y'all that stay in tune with the moon and transits. Y'all feel me? Y'all do the same thing, okay? For a lot of uh, y'all that may be you know uh, snatch out first uh, walk in the park when it comes to astrology. But you know these energies, boroscopes help us to understand what we dealing with, what transits we dealing with throughout the week. And um, with the moon conjunct Venus, emotions will be high. Emotions will be high, especially once again, especially if there's something that we truly want to manifest with career. If it's, if we're dealing with certain money issues, money management issues, emotions can be very frustrating right now because the moon is making us react and respond to how we should be valuing what we're working on. The moon is making us connect and place emotional intent to how we feel about career. Like we can't neglect these things. We can't act like if shit is fucked up in career right now, if you don't like where you working at, if you ain't satisfied with your social status, how you broadcast to the world, like not only are you gonna feel a way about it right now, you can be influenced to do some shit about it because the moon is dealing with reacting. <laughs> the moon is dealing with reacting and by that time, uh, you know, it's gonna be getting close to that peak. So the new moon will peak, you know, more so uh, late at night uh, for a lot of us while we're winding down on Tuesday night, but by the time we get into Wednesday, January 13th, the moon conjuncts Pluto as it transits late degree Capricorn, okay? So with this uh, new moon, not only are we going to be influenced with this, dealing with these new reality energies, remember y'all, new moons, new intentions, alright? New moons, new intentions. It's 2021, you know? We're early in this motherfucking Mayan calendar year, 
okay and family it doesn't matter what's going on in the external realm you can blossom with anything that you're dealing with, with on a personal level okay it don't matter what astrolog what predictions astrologers is giving y'all for the year there's aries taurus prediction for the year boom, boom boom you don't have to fall fake to none of that shit not saying some of these influences ain't right i mean ain't accurate but it's up to your personal conviction, family. It's up to you. It's up to the intentions you set, you set, and how you carry these out. How you're consistent with it. How practical you are about these things. How how uh, open you are for transformation, and not being vulnerable, having to transform things constructively. Critique yourself. Venus and Capricorn are gonna be bringing a lot of constructive uh, uh, constructive con critique from people that you fuck with. So don't uh, uh, don't. Take it hard right now when people is on your ass about uh, your responsibility. Venus is a relatable energy, so people are going to want to relate practicality and structure to people they care about. So don't take none of that shit offensive when your friend is looking out for you, but the, the way they talking to you is with, is with a Capricorn way. It's direct. It's dry. But it's Venus. It's trying to be relatable. So it's like, yo, why are you not working on what you said you're supposed to be working on this week? Your friend ain't trying to come at you. They're trying to help you. They're trying to support you. They're trying to appreciate you. Right now, with Venus and Capricorn, we're all, it. as much as I'm talking about these influences to pay attention to these things, setting you intentions on these things, Venus supports. So Venus is in Capricorn. All these things that we're dealing with with career and our social status and how we want to broadcast ourselves to the world and how we build the structure and what, what we should be placing limitations and boundaries on, Venus is supporting these things. Venus is going to drop some resources or help you to think and feel about people, places, and things to connect to in order to support in a, in a, to support what you value within career or the potential uh, social status you see yourself broadcasted as. Okay? So, um, with uh, the moon conjuncting Pluto towards these late stages, all right, um, transiting Capricorn. We got Pluto at the end of Capricorn, so Pluto been... Yeah, you know, alive. I motherfucking hope I don't get flagged. One of my videos got fucking flagged for some stupid shit when my instrumentals went off. I got my little playlist. I mean, as long as I could get the info out though. So, um, when we look at uh Mars in Capricorn, Mars been motherfucking. I mean, I said Mars, Pluto, Pluto. Not Mars, the big uncle, all right? Even though they're still dealing with the same energy, Pluto's dealing more long-term, okay? So, with Pluto transiting Capricorn, it's been, it's been here since the start of COVID, before COVID. I'm a Capricorn rising, so, you know, I'm very, I was very conscious when Pluto was moving into my first house. <laughs> About two and a half years ago, I was very fucking conscious of that shit. And, you know, when you're dealing with Pluto, when you're dealing with planets like Pluto... Mars, Saturn, your malefics for the most part. Y'all gotta understand, they, y'all gotta be the ones to truly control the motherfuckers. Planets are your tools. Y'all know I say that all the time. Your sun is your tool as a spirit. It shouldn't control you. You control it. So when we talk about the malefics, they're not easy energies at all. So, and when I say they're not easy, they're a, they may be aggressive, creating some form of limitation or energies and situations where you get taken from where you get transformed where you get manipulated where you get you feel me your energy drained so you got to be conscious where your malefics at where your saturn where your mars where your pluto at now when we talk about motherfucking pluto you need to be the one transforming things you need to be the one gaining power and control over what's going on with your desires and passions and goals in that area of life or you're going to continue to feel like you're always trying to find power and you, you, if you don't know you got Pluto in that house, you're not going to un truly understand. You got to set certain intentions in that area of life to make sure you solidify shit with your passions and your long-term intentions. So you're not always trying to, you know, uh, once again, Pluto deal with power and control issues. It deal with ego, uh, ego deaths. It deal with rebirths. So if you got to be able to kill your, you know, kill your ego wherever uh, Pluto is at to help you evolve. So with the moon transiting here, you know, like I said, when Pluto, I'm a cap rising, when Pluto's transit in my first house, my whole life transformed the fuck, the fuck like shit that, yeah, I couldn't even curse properly. That's not even a proper curse, but I had to throw some curse word energy out there just cause I knew that bitch was coming and 
I had to make a certain certain decisions in my personal life to take that power and control that was not easy decisions to make to understand this is what I got to do right now. Like Pluto can't come in here and make these decisions for me, but something got to get transformed. And if I allow Pluto to do it, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna really like these transformations. And in my personal opinion, you know, some of the decisions that I made, I had moved around that time, did a couple of things, and I look back like, hmm, if I ain't do them things, I know Pluto would have. I know Pluto would have had me going through shit around that time, and that's not even to say that time was easy. So, uh, you know, with the moon chance in here, we're going to be reacting and responding towards what is it in that, in our uh, physical reality we need to transform, okay? It's going to be certain emotions that you guys have about certain people, places, and things that you guys are going to feel like detaching. So when we come to the new moon, and especially towards that end transit, when, um, on... Wednesday, when it starts to conjunct Pluto, when y'all start feeling tired, weary, stressed, frustrated about certain things you've been connected to, attached to, Pluto is telling you right now, homie, homegirl, transform this motherfucker, because if you don't do it, I got 48 hours. I got 24 hours to, to get this shit up out of here when it comes to our physical reality. When it comes to how we broadcast it to the world, when it comes to our passions, when it comes to our goals, Capricorn energy. If you don't understand this person, place, or thing that you connected to, got to be transformed. That you, this desire that you have, that you connected to, which are that that's affecting your social status and career. If you don't understand, if you can't pick up subconsciously, intuitively, that this is a blockage for your career, the way Pluto about to transform that shit, you don't want to deal with that. Because it's going to be a super emotional transform transformation. Why? Because the moon is here. So some type of way universe is going to use a personal place or thing to let you know this shit needs to get transformed. And uh, not only is that the energy you want to understand, but understand Pluto is dealing with our long-term passions, goals, and desires. It's dealing with the longevity of our passions. So with the moon transit here is new moon season. Now we're setting new intentions. So the very foundation of these energies are they have some Pluto energy behind it, have some passion behind it, has some long, some longevity behind it, has some endurance behind it, has some durability behind it. These new intentions we planted right now. So these new moon, the, the energy for your new reality can surely be established with a certain conviction and being able to understand that you need to put practical work in after that. But it starts with the intention first, family. So let's make sure we plant that into our garden and do what we got to do to water that garden as we move on and move on through these next new full moon transits that we're going to be experiencing this year. Okay? Um, moon conjuncts Pluto, the transit late cap, and we'll enter. So the moon is going to enter Aquarius on the fourth, on Wednesday as well late Wednesday. So when the moon enters Aquarius, we're going to be more for, uh, influenced to react and respond, you know, to our relationships, our associations, okay, to more, uh, you know, abstract energies may want to put your mind towards learning certain things, connecting to more things outside of the norm, okay. And you're also going to be sizing up your individuality and what type of individuality you feel like you hold in the world. How people see your individuality when you connect them to others. Do you have certain things about yourself that you can individually brand to network and connect to the world, to represent yourself, to build, to exchange resources? So this is what like the mind is going to be on right now. Another energy that may influence us to be more detached, to relate to others, but with, with, from some space. So if I'm going to talk to y'all, FaceTime me. Don't be just pulling up to the crib right now, even though it's air energy. Let me utilize different, unique forms of communication, aka 11th house energy, and let me be to my own unique individual thoughts right now. Thursday, uh, the moon will conjunct Mercury in Aquarius. So we know you got Mercury in Aquarius, so as the moon transits, it's going to conjunct Mercury right now. We could don't allow yourself to be too lost into your thoughts and to overthink your emotions, okay? The moon is dealing with your emotions, but when it, changes, when it changes Mercury, Mercury could start just analyzing everything about the moon, analyzing everything about his mom, how his mom feel, why his mom feel this way. So it's going to help you bring clarity to things that have been dealing with emotional distress or whatnot, but at the same time, your mind can be lost in the emotional state. You can, so it's going to be times where you feel like you feel away, but you're going to have to realize like, do I really feel this way or am I just thinking about shit a certain way and it's making me feel this way? So. This is like what I be telling my Gemini moons. Like Gemini moons, you guys have to be able to like tell yourself like, all right, let me just stop thinking about this for a second. And let me see if I'm gonna keep feeling like this for the rest of the day. Then you realize, oh shit, I wasn't really feeling the ways. My mind was just all fucked up and I thought those was my feelings. So that's why the moon a little sticky with Gemini um, 
yeah, the moon gets sticky in the Gemini constellation. But when you got Mercury here, all right, when you got Mercury uh, here, this is the sign that rules Gemini and Virgo, dealing with the intellect. So the intellect and our emotional state, these things could get intertwined in a positive and negative way. We want to make sure we gain the clarity of what's been affecting our emotions, what's been playing as blockages towards how we could be comfortable, because the moon deals with how we become comfortable here. And, um, you know, things dealing with the family, home environment, uh, distractions and blockages towards the people, places and things we want to connect to. These are the things that uh, we're going to be thinking about, developing ideas about, okay? So we just want to make sure that, you know, the intellect and the mind doesn't get lost with the details analyzing these things. Um, and it's going to be an Aquarius, so we're going to, we may truly feel like expressing our ideas and our thoughts to others. We may truly feel like expressing the details of how we see things with relationships and people, all right, and associates. So be mindful who you're communicating to about, about, all right? Be careful who you're communicating to and who you're communicating about because it could be impulsive. Once again, the moon feels. So if you got the moon conjunct any planets in your chart, understand this energy is attached to how you be feeling a lot of the time, how you deal with your emotional stability. So if you got the moon conjunct your Mercury, you stay thinking about your fucking feelings. Sometimes you got to really learn to get out your, get your head out your feelings. Get your head to pay attention to shit outside of you because you could get lost in your own internal energy. So we just want to make sure we don't do that but you're gonna have a very analytical, intelligent person. So this the 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 analyzation needs to be directed towards our associates organizations to bring the clarity out of this energy, okay? And then the 15, we're gonna have the moon entering Pisces on Friday. So we know Pisces is mutable water, ruled by Jupiter, co-ruled. Ruled by Jupiter, co-ruled by Neptune, okay? I didn't say Aquarius is co-ruled by Uranus. So Uranus deals with individuality, uniqueness. So this is another reason why I emphasize those two traits with the moon transiting uh, Mercury. And I mean, with the moon transiting Aquarius and also with Mercury and Aquarius when I mentioned that earlier. But uh, on Friday, when the moon enters Pisces, the moon, the moon likes, see the moon likes water element, likes the vibration element. But when it gets into Pisces, we know Pisces dealing with your imagination, your creative source, you know, your faith and belief. Your ability to tap into your dreams and your subconscious. Pisces shows how you connect the emotions and the subconscious energies. So when we have the moon chance in here, this is what we're looking at. We're reacting and responding and feeling like we have to connect to others, connect our creativity to the world, have be seen or find ways to express our creativity. Okay, we could be feeling real imaginative and have our creative juices flowing at the moment with the moon transiting uh Pisces. With the moon transiting Pisces, uh you know, you could, you could, we could pick up the influence to truly want to connect, especially if you have a lot of water placements. All right, there's truly a time where it's like, damn, I really don't want to, you know, I want to connect to somebody, probably deal with some form of intimacy. So if you single and all that, you ain't got nobody, don't be too hard on yourself because you will be probably be in your feelings a little bit with the moon transiting Pisces, all right? But for the most part, you know, moon transit Pisces helps us to look at because Pisces is a 12th sign, 12th house. So every moon in Pisces transit is more of a like an evolution about to finish the cross. Uh, even if it's not a new moon, full moon, just because of the natural frequency vibration, it helps us to like look at things from a from an evolution, conclusion, ending standpoint. So we are starting to with the moon transit in Pisces, we're able to see how things how things are uh, evolving in a state. We're seeing how things are transitioning in our life, okay? Because everything is from a subconscious look, all right? And then uh, we're also going to have on the 16th, on Saturday, as the moon transits Pisces, okay? The moon will conjunct Neptune. We got Neptune in Pisces. Neptune dealing with your dreams, your imagination, your creative source, all right, your spiritual essence. So when the moon transiting here, we're going to really, you know, be in a state of looking at life more, more, uh, looking at life from a more philo philosophical standpoint, trying to make sense of our emotions, though, because Pisces deal with water, it deal with your emotions. It's ruled by Jupiter and Neptune. So this is where the spiritual inclination comes from with Pisces anyways, on top of the 12th house. So not only do we have the intuitiveness of the water energy, we have the we have the emphasis of Jupiter and Neptune dealing with spirituality, faith, belief, your imagination, the subconscious, your dreams, the esoteric realm, karma, life after death. And then we have 
the moon uh, the moon is going to be transiting this energy so it's going to be a whole spiritual influence on uh friday you know you may really start seeing things from bigger broader perspectives you're going to be having more clarity about things with your emotions why you've been feeling certain ways about things be able to deal with more compassion connecting to others and just you know this is also real relatable energy all right uh we're in a state of truly wanting to value things dealing with our imagination this weekend Okay, so when it comes to our favorite pastimes, creative endeavors, what entertain, what what uh entertains us, how we have to like to have fun, we're gonna want to connect to these things as well. So, be careful dealing with any any overwhelming, frustrating energies, not being able to react and respond to these things, or feel like you're dealing with some restrictions, limitations, dealing trying to connect to your imagination, or more creative endeavors, or more fun endeavors. All right, now the moon will also be sextiling uh mars and venus now this is very key because mars represents your passions goals desires what you don't like and what frustrates you venus represents what you like what you love your pleasures so with moon uh sextile and both of these energies we're gonna have the gift to react and respond and get aligned with both of these energies so it could be a very inspiring, motivating time to want to appreciate, support your motives, your passions, and connect to these things. But because Mars and Venus are both dealing with your, your feelings and the moon is the planet dealing with emotional stability, we may be filtering a whole bunch of feelings this weekend dealing with our passions, dealing with our values, being able to see how we balance these things. Now, more specifically, Mars is in Taurus. So we broke that energy this week, you know, uh, 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 placing our, you know, more intention on building a new reality through our passion, seeing how we could cultivate our passions into our new reality, but also dealing with some frustration, okay, within uh, the seeds that we planted, having to deal with more patience within the things that we want to grow as well with Mars here. So then we have Venus in Capricorn. Okay, once again, we valuing how we build structure, social status, career, and seeing the reality of our relationships and wanting to be more realistic dealing with our values and what we love. So right now, the moon is going to help us to uh, react and respond to these things from a creative level, from a compassionate level, okay? So when it comes to your values with Venus and Capricorn, you're going to have the ability to react and respond to how you value, appreciate, and support these things from a more, uh, you know, compassionate state of mind because it is the moon in Pisces so you're gonna uh, want to be able to see how your wisdom your emotional intelligence what you know and your how you can take them things to support your your love to build your social status all right or your value for your physical reality and physical security with moon sextile and mars is gonna be a really motivated uh alignment i got this alignment moon sextile mars so as motivated as you are gonna uh, uh, as we are gonna be to react and respond and connect to things in the physical reality because it's in taurus as well we know taurus rules the physical reality taurus rules the five senses so this is why taurus have a great feel for touching for masseuse being masseuses massaging and all of that okay Tauruses know how to touch the body. Tauruses is real sensual science. They know how to find your spot. So <laughs> when we're talking about uh, Mars here, we're going to be real passionate about how we're cultivating our physical security and whatnot. But with the moon here, we may be that inspired and motivated to just connect and dive into these things. So we have to have some patience and not be too impulsive here because the moon is going to be connecting to a lot of feelings. So we're going to feel like we have the ability to connect right to these things because they sextiles. We're going to feel the access to these energies. All right. So let's stay in a positive frequency vibration. And making sure we're adding knowledge and wisdom and positive emotional intent into career and social status and how we're valuing and appreciating that with moon sextile venus and capricorn and let's make sure with the moon sextile and mars and taurus that we're making sure we're reacting and responding to how we're you know effectively directing our passions into our value system or how we're uh making sure we're being uh, wise about how we're connecting to something that motivates us or inspires us or to things in the physical realm makes us feel good as well mars can make you mars and Taurus can make you real motivated and inspired to make sure you get to connect to the things that make you feel good so this is what we want to keep in mind so we don't overdo it okay so family these are the energies we're going to be experiencing from january 12th for the week of january 10th 
through the 16th okay we got the new moon in the forecast with a bunch of other alignments okay so family y'all already know the vibes make sure to like share subscribe tap into the patreon and all that good stuff okay we build a lot of dope things over there but uh you know if you guys resonate with what we got going over here i'm pretty sure you're gonna like what we're doing on the patreon but family until next time your guy out of here peace